watching Brand New Media. I have with me today, Tad Pearson. Good afternoon, Brenda. Hi, how are you doing? Good, good to have you here. Good. Now, this is part of my Walk with the Artist series. Now, Tad, he collects tires on the streets That's right. of Memphis and also in the ditches of Memphis and he make beautiful designs like this chair that I'm sitting in, this chair that he's sitting in, and we're gonna take a tour of everything that he does. I mean, this is magnificent, it's wonderful. Okay, so Ted, tell me, how did you get started with this? In the tire art business, uh, about 10, 12 years ago, I started painting tires for fun, for garden planters and things like that. And when you have a, your own workspace, your own studio, things can kind of get out of hand and get ahead of you. And uh, suddenly one day I started painting, you know, making sort of assembly, assemblage pieces, flowers, uh, if you will, and that evolved into chairs, uh, trash cans. But then it became kind of a mission for me in that it is recycled material. And tires, especially in Memphis, but just across the world, tires are a problem. You know, they get discarded in ditches, and tires are designed to not deteriorate. I mean, when they, you know, the, the, the engineers that make tires want them to be as stable as they can in a toxic environment. So tires really don't dissolve, you know, over long term. So we need to do something with them. And uh, this is one way it's artistic, artistic. but also, also it's a, a recycling of, uh -huh. uh, you know, uh -huh. not a toxic material, but, uh, a, a, you know, items that just aren't going to disappear. I'll tell you one thing. Very comfortable. Is it comfortable? I want to hear that. I want Very to, I, comfortable. I, you know, I like this. And they're kind of a good lumbar support. I you know? like this. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's perfect. Yeah. It's, it's perfect. Of, it matches your, the spine. The you spine. Know? It's yeah. like in the perfect spot. Yeah. No, I think. I, and, and I like it. I, I'd like to say that that was uh, by design, but really, I'm just working with materials that I've got, and it just so happens when you cut a tire, and that the curve is kind of naturally, uh, you know, matches your. Fine. Okay, well, I would like to get up so we can really yeah. show. Yeah. Now, where do you get your material from? Well, what is it, what, well, first of all, what is it made out of? This is a, this is just a regular a street tire. This is a street tire and, here. And then, and if you can see this, you know, I kind of created a, a little a, a metal back for it, and then that's just a, a small tire that I cut a section out of a tire, and mm -hmm. that's what that's what matches, you know, your back or your, or your spine. Okay. Uh, I, I, I get the materials from Home Depot, okay. off the shelf, okay. everything's, you know, recycled. Look at this um, one over here. Okay. This, is, this one's kind of the outdoor seating because it's uh -huh. got a, a web mesh uh, it's a seat and, uh, you know, again, it's got the, the, the metal back and it's Comfy. Kind, of, kind of comfortable. Okay, let's take, right a, let's take a look over here. Yeah. Let's take a look over here. Look at this one. Woo, tech. Love it. <laughs> This is, uh, again, some of these, you know, with the, with the pillow, those are sort of the indoor chairs. And then the ones with the mesh seating, uh, I think of as kind of outdoor chairs. Rather than, you know, your back patio or your swimming pool. Uh -huh. But that was sort of, it came out uh, a little bit of a, you know, New Mexico motif kind uh -huh. of, southwestern uh -huh. look. Uh -huh. But here's what, I think, a breakthrough, if you will, you know, that's what's so cool about being an artist. Anybody that does artwork, uh -huh. uh, they always say this, but even but writers say this, but the story sort of takes over and guides you along, or the discovery as an artist of something that isn't is a happy accident, you know, it, it creates the, the, the better piece of art. Well, you know, I was just painting them one time, and I thought, yeah. you know, I can I can I like the color. I can roll over it. I, I paint mm -hmm. down in there deep, and then I roll over it, and that gives it the two tone pop. Mm -hmm. But that two tone. That's what sets it off because then you see the, the tread pattern, and that's what's beautiful about tires. But when they're just when they're unpainted on a car, you don't see the tread pattern. It's just all one black color, pattern. and right. you don't see it. But when you paint it and make a, a, a two tone pattern out of it, suddenly the, the pattern pops up. And okay. if you look around, almost no two tires are the same. You know, no two tires and are the same. I'm, I'm recycling them. So some tires, you know, they're worn more on one side or the other. Look at that yellow. I love yellow. I Look yeah, at that one. That one, one is favorite, so cute. You know? I like that one. And, uh, but, you know, okay. uh, these are, this is kind of a, a bistro table, if you will, you know. A bistro uh, table. Well, you know, you can set that. Uh, this is, this is 
What's this one over this, here? This is a trash can. I like that. This is a trash can. Oh, trash okay. Can so you made a trash can oh, out of the tires. Out of the tires. I Very cut, creative. I cut the sidewall off. That's the lid, you know, and I put a And I like the colors. Back, you know? Now, uh, not, not only tires you collect, but look at this one. Oh, this is, you know, I, This is different. Now, explain this to me. I was, there was an old house being torn down and it was abandoned. And I found this piece of linoleum in the old floor, and I pulled it out, and I, it was all brittle, and I, put, I glued it onto this piece of plywood. Uh -huh. And I just sat for years and years uh -huh. in my studio, and then one day I was just looking at these flowers, and I was into my tire art, and I thought, I'm going to make a big tire piece that kind of mimics these colors here, these flowers. So this is made from, I don't cut these. I just drive along the highway, and if you've ever been so down the highway... So you don't cut these. I mean, you pick them up off the street. Off the like highway. It, off the you, highway. You go down the highway, and you know, a, a tire blows out, and the shards go flying off. Well, you so go you down said, the highway... So you said, let me go get that piece of rubber. And I pick them up, and, and because like it, it, they, they, they kind of, you know, curve back, like the, that's natural, and that's just the way they are. Anyway, I found, out, I found all those pieces, and... And started sticking them together and assembled that thing and then painted it like that and uh, you know. Right, okay, now explain this one. What, what is that, Todd? Yeah, what's that? A, a, winter, a heater for the winter. That's a gas heater. Oh, uh, oh. Like a patio heater. That, that's his heater. Yeah. He also lives here, but we're going to get into that a little later. Yeah, so uh, it is a nice warm hot summer day, but in the wintertime it's, uh, it's nice to This is his heater. Uh, yeah. Very, very yeah. creative. Well, it's, it's, Got this it. man is very creative. Sur surviving is the mother of invention. But you've done a lot of things. You have your, let's talk about your education background. Uh, I didn't go to college right out of high school, but uh, I, I learned a trade. I became a welder. And welder? for a lot of years, I was a, about eight years, I was a welder. And then I decided I wanted to go back to college. And I okay. went to the University of New Mexico. University of New Mexico. And I got a Bachelor of Science degree okay. in education. I could be a shop teacher. Okay. That, was my, that was my degree that I could go out and be a shop teacher. Okay. But I wanted to travel. I've always uh -huh. loved traveling. Okay. And, I, and a professor advised me that if I got a degree, a master's degree in English as a second language, combined with my bachelor's in uh, industrial arts, that I could combine those two and go out and work in industry overseas, teaching English to petroleum employees or... Uh, so you went the, overseas and you taught English. You have your master's degree in, in English. In and English. Second, English as a second language. Okay. Uh, which is sort of more, not literature, but the teaching of language. So what country? What country? I worked in Saudi Arabia for a year. Uh, I worked in Indonesia for two years. I was in Burundi in Central Africa uh, on a teacher training uh, uh, mission for about six months. Uh, teaching English teachers because my background so is in technology. Okay. I was in Burundi. I was teaching. Uh, college graduates, Africans, that were then going to go out into the countryside and teach English in vocational schools. So I taught them how to take a carpentry book, how to take a welding book, and create lesson plans using the technology of, uh, wow. using the language of technology, as Excellent. opposed to reading a menu or, uh, you know, excuse me, how do I, does this bus go to some place? So, Amazing. So, That's excellent. Uh, so, I, mean, very, so very I think good. my background kind of, because I like to work with tools, uh, you know, that lends itself to the artwork that I've done. Okay. So I'm not a technically trained artist in that uh, I didn't go to art school to paint, but you know, industrial art. Industrial, industrial art. art. Okay, okay. Look at this big tire here. These, Look at this one. These are kind of what, yeah, lobby settee. What type of tire is this? this, is this a, what type of tire is this? This is a big tractor, tra big tractor tire. A big tractor you know, tire. I found that one, you know, laying on the side of the road. But wouldn't it look cool if the Memphis Airport had a bunch of these sitting around, you know? And what time is this like? What time? <laughs> Let's see now. Uh, where are we going? Gotta, now? Go, gotta go. Gotta go. Yeah. But that's a, you know, that's what I hope for these, you know. Or, uh -huh. you know, a cool uh, saloon or disco tech. That's, that's perfect. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, I like it. These, uh, they all, you know, I don't know if we can see this in the paint time. But, uh, got lights. It's too hard to see. What, what is that? Oh, it's got a light down in there. Oh, it's a light. So at, at nighttime, you know, or in a in a dimly lit bar or a back patio or something like that, you know, the, the, the light kind of shines there and this glows beautifully. So it's a um, glow here. Same with this one. There. It's a glow here. You can, yeah, this, and these are ground pads. 
a drummer buddy of mine. You know, these are out of tune. Or no, you're into away. music. You're into I'm music. into music, but I'm not a musician. I'm a, I'm a dedicated member of the audience. You know, I okay. love, but you I love, love your, I your, love music. You I love, love your blues. I love blues, man. I, love, I think I think blues music is uh, one. It's like you know, it makes you move. move it makes move, you move. You know? <laughs> and, uh, it's messing, but it, but it also is an expression of the people, kind of like right. you know, folk music or something. And, and uh, it's uh, the, the history of the blues is a, is a you know fascinating history. You know? History. And the, Boy, just now, since you mentioned it. the history of, of blues, you also have a business here in Memphis, Tennessee. Yes. You have a tour business. So let's elaborate a little bit. Tell me about your business. That's here. what brought me to Memphis. Uh, I have a tour company called American Dream Safari. And my initial idea was that I would use old vintage American cars for my tours as opposed to a tour bus or a van or something like that. So your old vintage cars. Yeah. And, and this is... This is one of them here. That's one of my, that's, that was my grandfather's 1950 Buick, and, and I got that. That's what started the tour business. This is a 1950. 1950 Buick Roadmaster. Oh, it's, I should have, I should have. That's okay. Cleaned it all you up. You should have cleaned it all up. <laughs> but, uh, but that's this, okay, but, but this, was, this was my, this was my first vehicle in, in the tour business. Okay. So and, this is the first one. But it was original with my grandfather's. I'm sentimental about it. I was always nervous about, you know, getting, having a fender bender or breaking it down. So I bought my 1955 Cadillac and I put a brand new 350 Chevy motor in it. I made it basically a 95 Chevy Suburban. 1955. It's a 1955 Cadillac. Let's, let's go, let's, you're okay. This is your garage. This, this is, is your garage. space. This is my studio. This, this is, is your, where I work. This, yeah. is, this is your home, studio, yeah. garage. So Office. it's okay. We, we expect a garage to look like this. Okay, <laughs> okay Tad. So you're okay. Yeah. Now this is the 1955 Cadillac. 55 and this, Cadillac. this is what I get my tours in on a regular basis. On a day, I had a tour yesterday from a, for, uh, two couples from Montreal. I, Memphis. From all over the world. Memphis is a town that I think those of us that are from here don't realize how important the town is out there in the world. You know, the uh -huh. music that came from here. But uh -huh. people, uh, I, get, I get customers from all over. I, 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 I get, customers uh, from all over the world all you give a tour. I get all over the world. Uh, now your tour, how, where do you go with your tour? Uh, I have a city tour that's about three hours long and a general look at Memphis is starting downtown at the Peabody Hotel, but a little bit of early Elvis history is always good for everybody. Oh, Blues yes. history. Yes. Uh, one of the fascinating things I think that's interesting about Memphis is, you know, the town's 65% black, 30% white, but African American history in Memphis is, if you just want to look at Elvis, the influence of blacks, black culture on Elvis was profound. Uh -huh. The way he dressed, the music that he loved, uh -huh. Uh -huh. so uh, that is a, a big part of looking at Memphis and experiencing Memphis, you know, right. so there's, there's blues clubs here, there's barbecue joints, there's, you know, the, the, the Bill, Street the Bill, Bill Street history. Uh, you know, sometimes people say, "Oh, Bill Street is full of tourists, and then it's you know, it's it's not real anymore." Uh -huh. Possibly, but uh, are you from Memphis? You grew up in Memphis. Yes. Manassas High School on the yes. north side. Emerson Abel. Had, Manassas had a history of having a fantastic band program. Uh -huh. Legendary band directors at, at yes. Manassas. Emerson Abel uh, just passed away last week, uh -huh. two weeks ago, uh -huh. and they had a benefit tribute for him up on Bill Street, and it was a legendary meeting of. Musicians. All the old musicians. Oh, they came like back, and, and it was the real deal. Oh, you know, so I mean, nice. it was the real deal. And Ernest Withers Photography Studio Museum yes. is up on Beale Street. That, if that's not the real deal, yes. I don't know what is. You yes. Know. Uh, so um, anyway, so so that's uh, I like uh, you it. know Martin Luther King. You know, the, it's not just the Lorraine Motel and where he was assassinated, but what were the reasons why he came to town? You know, the, the struggles uh, that sanitation workers were up against and. Uh, you know, so I, so I show people the back, the back story. If we have time, he's going to give us a little yeah. tour today. Oh, I love I'm that. very excited. I heard I that it. his his tour is just awesome. I love that. He is so knowledge about Memphis. He is so smart. Yeah. Let's take a look. Let's take a look over here at uh, where he lives. We're going to take a look of his palace. Let's, let's take a look at. It. Set up a little uh, bar area over there. Okay. 
And then I've got some vintage airspeed trailers. Put it in! Uh, yeah, you kind of plug it in and uh, turn it on. Plug it in! Now this this is a lamp here. It's a recycled bucket? It's a recycled bucket. And he created this bucket I don't know if you to make a, a lamp. Can uh, you see it? I was, I was camping over in Arkansas with a friend of mine and the, the RV next to us had a white bucket with Christmas lights in it and they were hanging from the on, 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 awning. Uh -huh. And uh, I just thought, wow, it just makes a beautiful color. I could turn it, but I instantly could see turning it upside down and making a lampshade out of it. So I made one and I made <laughs> Look at that one down there. That's my chandelier. Chandelier. Made from... Uh, the chandelier. I see that you have um, your... your um, is that dishwasher liquid? That's, yes, those are uh, dishwasher liquid containers. Yeah, let me turn the plug that. Dishwasher liquid containers. Recycle. And he recycled those. And he had little light bulbs. Oh, how cute! How lovely! I think oh, the, I love it! I just think they look That nice. is so and, cute. I bet it looks really, really nice at night. Oh, yeah, I, I, I mean, like the color. The, the colors. And, and that's the that's the color of the plastic bottles. Now, you know, I don't spray paint them or I don't that do anything really like that. really nice. But uh, the detergent bottles are, you know, green, purple, blue, red. I mean, they're beautiful. You know, now, you sell these items. Yes. Yeah, you yeah, sell yeah, these yeah, items. Yeah, so, yeah, so um, you know. Yes. Uh, the, the frame for the chandelier is a what they call a papa zone chair. Okay. It's sort of a, a bamboo chair yes. with a bean bag in it. Yes. Well, they break or people get the you know, they throw them away. And I find those on the, on the sidewalk. So I've got about four more back there that I found out there on the curb. And uh, you know, turn them upside down and make chandeliers out of them. So creative, uh, so creative. Now we're gonna go over here and take a look at his home. Come on. I've got, I've got skylights that come down. You have skylights? And so, this is, look, it's just catching the light just right. This, this one's kind of weird. Yeah. Oh, okay. But I just saw that as we were walking down there. Yeah, yeah, the skylight is, is, is hitting the perfect spot. Right. Right there. Isn't that a weird time? Who would have thought? I, I have no idea what that is. I mean, this is, this is a tire from a... ATV or you know a four wheeler or something uh -huh, like that. Uh -huh. But when it was laying in the ditch, all covered in mud, it didn't look like anything. And then I cleaned it up and then put that two tone paint job on it. And that, that, that looks like hieroglyphics or <laughs> you know a typewriter. <laughs> look at this old machine here. Look at this. I it, you know people just abandon things and, and drop things off, but that's a working. Uh, oh, it works? Machine. I've got a new, I put a new motor on it. And, really? Uh, it but, you know, this is like from the old days, and you don't just wash a couple of shirts in there. You know, you got to be, that's why Monday was wash day, because they would wash all day long with a, <laughs> with a big, heavy bucket like that, you know? But you can, yes. you, can, you can wash a lot of clothes. You can wash a lot of clothes in there. Yeah. Okay, let's see now. Now, this is his living area. My living area. This is a, a, my bedroom over there on the right. That's the that's the trailer I'm sleeping in currently because I've got an air conditioner in there. Air conditioner is in there, and this is the spare bedroom. Uh, the spare the, the bedroom. Guest, the guest <laughs> this is his guest room. How lovely! This is the guest room. We got a stove yeah. and table and everything is in here. Yeah, and then uh, and then this is kind of, this is the the, the master. This bedroom. is the master bed. Let's yeah. take a look over here. Yeah. Well, you know, when you have all this stuff, you collect it. You so, did you collect cool. this? I bought this one to go with my granddad's 50 Buick, and then, like a lot of things, you get into one, you think, oh, you know, they're cool. The Airstream's not. I bought this one in New Mexico. So, you I got this one in New one. Mexico. I here. bought that one here in Memphis. And when I rented this building, I didn't put these trailers in here with the idea that I would live here. But it's, I just got it's in it. It's pretty big in here. This is big. You know, yeah, you can. It's big in here. You know, two beds back there. You know, it's it's a very comfortable. Uh, very comfortable. Big, big room. In fact, I've got some. Very guests. comfortable. I've got 
two guests coming from Arkansas this weekend. They're going to stay And they here. come and camp out with you, and y'all have just up, a good time I'll in here. I'll have a hook up an air, air conditioner for them so they can have, you know, stay cool. Stay and cool? <laughs> Very nice. I mean, I, I like it. It's, this, it was a real breakthrough for me pretty. to have my trailers indoors because I think that's the way I'm going to live now for the rest of my life. I can't imagine. You want to I, live I, I like this I, well, for the rest of your yeah, life. I can't this imagine. This is my choice. I mean, this is my choice. This is my choice because you don't have to live like this, but this is by. I choice. can't imagine renting a one bedroom apartment and then having a studio across town. Right. Or something like that. I mean, it's just a, you, you know, I, I can. I can see where I moved from here, but maybe into a smaller building, a yes. bigger building. But still, put a trailer inside a warehouse and have a bathroom and a shower, and you're good to and go. And you're good. You're yeah. content. You're yeah. happy. You yeah. got everything right here. You have your workstation right here. You have your cars right here. Yeah. I can, you know, I've got a little bit of a kitchen, and I can survive. Uh, you can survive. cook. You can, can survive. survive. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I mean, this, this is, you're very creative, and... Uh, well, it's kind of... I think it ties back into my tour business that, you know, my life is on the road and so the way I live resembles looking like I'm in motion. In motion. <laughs> now, do you travel any other parts in the Mid-South with your tour business? Uh, over the years, I I know Nashville, Memphis, New Orleans quite well. Uh, I've done tours from Nashville to Memphis to New Orleans. Uh, I go to Clarksdale, Mississippi frequently in the area. Tupelo, Mississippi is where uh, Elvis was from. Dias, Arkansas is where Johnny Cash came from. Uh, little day trips out beyond Memphis. But generally, I, I, stick, I stick with uh, music tours, what I call the, the, the Great American Music How Tour. How can people get in contact with you if they want to take a tour? I've got a tour, I've got a, a website, americandreamsafari.com. So people can go look at uh, American, American Dream, Dream Safari. Safari. When I was dot com. When I was young, I got a chance to go to Africa and, and tour around and travel with a good friend of mine. And uh, when I came up with this concept, I wrote him a letter and said, "Hey, I've got this idea. I'm going to start a tour company. And it's going to be remember that African safari we took. Well, it's going to be like that. But it, instead of the African safari, it's going to be it's going to be it'll be the American the American Dream Safari. Yeah, American that's it. American Dream Safari. That's it. That's <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, that's how I came up with the name. Yeah, it's, it's, it's great. It's a, it's, a great, it's a great name. I like the well, name. Well, AmericanBankSafari.com is uh, my website, and i got a lot of information in there. But in this world we live in now, you know, I've got a Facebook page. Facebook? American, American Bank Safari. But, uh, you know, you Google that name. And then email me. That sounds good. That sounds really awesome. Take the tour. What do you think? We're, we're ready. We're getting ready to take a tour now. So I'm excited. So just tune in with us. Get ready to take a tour. Come on, Ty. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go.